This is how it ended back in August. England held on to the urn. Today they head off to Australia for the next chapter. At least the journey is relatively quick and comfortable. They'll follow the same routine as Andrew Strauss's squad three years ago. Swiftly through check-in at Heathrow, and then the longest of hauls halfway around the world in a day. Of course, it didn't used to be this quick. At the end of a 10,000-mile trip from England, SS Orlandis brings the MCC cricketers for their Australian tour. In 1932, Douglas Jardine's team travelled in style, but on a very slow boat via Sri Lanka, then called Ceylon, to Perth. It must have been very frustrating um, for, for, for certain characters, I would have said. And, uh, and of course, the journalists were travelling with them as well. Fortunately, in those days, you know, what, what, go, what went on tour stayed on tour for the most part. Planes eventually took over from liners after the war. Recent tours, though, were still much longer affairs. When we went on tour, we had a lot of time to prepare and we were wishing at one stage we didn't have as many games because we weren't playing very well. But I think in, in the long run, it does stand you in good stead to, to get some proper preparation. Now, uh, there's so much cricket being played elsewhere around the world and the demands on England or the demand for England to play somewhere is greater that they're trying to squeeze as much as they can into a short period of time. There was one voyage just after the war which was memorable for all the players concerned. Women travelled out to be what they called war brides so they travelled out to Australia to get married and uh, on this particular trip it was 17 English cricketers and 400 single at that stage single women um, and as I think uh, was written in, the, in one of the books about that voyage um, you know the Englishman would be a, very gallant to save the uh, to save the lonely ladies from any or to save the ladies from any loneliness. The celebrations at the Oval are still fresh in the memory of England supporters. Today, the journey begins towards another titanic contest. Peter Saunton, Sky Sports.